What is happening guys, Kati Place here, bringing you another Yu-Gi-Oh! Masterful video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing my top 8 deck lists from gt 2 r 15 hosted by DLE. I want to start off by thanking them so much for always hosting these awesome events. Uh, every week, DLE does Master Duel, Duel Links tournaments, and, you know, every week, whether it's a Duel Links or Master Duel tournaments, gg 2 r sponsors them and does a huge tournament. Uh, so it's great for the community, and I just want to thank you guys so much for always doing them. The community would not be the same if they did not host these tournaments. Uh, but I was fortunate enough this past Saturday um, to get top 8 in their num their 15th Master Duel tournament. Uh, yeah, and it was a great experience. I decided to play Brand of Despia. This was post ban list, so this was post the, you know, the Hulk ban and uh, post the Temple to 1 limits and all that stuff. So, yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into the deck profile. I'm going to start off with the Despia lineup. Uh, I played Triple Alibur, Triple Tragedy, one Comedy, one Dramaturge, one Adlib. I decided to play like a really full Despia lineup because I wanted to have the best grind game, but also have like a really good matchup against the Mirror Match, which is what Dramaturge is for. Have a good matchup against Hand Traps, which is what Comedy is for, because I thought Hand Traps were going to be really popular in this tournament, and they were, so I was right about that. Um, so yeah, Comedy is really good against Hand Traps because it prevents, you know, Alibur from getting like targeted. Uh, when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a Despia card you control, you can discard this card to negate that effect. So if they hit him with an Imperm or a Veiler, you can just comedy it. It's great. It also lets you play around Imperm or Veiler on your fusions when this is in the grave. So you just send it to the grave once off a branded fusion or discarding it or something like that, and you're good to go for the rest of the game. It's really good. Uh, for the Albaz lineup, I played Triple Albaz, one Albion, one Ecclesia. Um, I liked three Albaz and one Ecclesia because it made it so basically I have four Albaz in my opening hand, which is great. And then obviously the Albion is just consistency. You know, you're able to get what you want in the graveyard. You're able to get an Albaz to the graveyard to make Brandon and Red live. You're able to put an opening in graveyard to protect your fusions <clears throat> and draw consistent cards off this. Like it's just, it's just an overall great card and I wouldn't play the deck without it, I don't think. Uh, and then I played one kit and one Mercarrier. One kit, one Mercarrier. Because these are just great branded lost targets. This is, uh... You know, this is also a pseudo starter. It's a starter, just not a very good one. Then the Merc is obviously fantastic if you're able to resolve it. You know, if you're able to get it to your hand off branded loss, then it's just a free interruption on your opponent's turn. I don't know if I'd play these going forward, though. Just put that out there. I don't know how good they actually are. Uh, and then I played Triple Edge and Chain. This is just like a full gal, obviously, as you can tell. This is just a lot of gas in this list. Like, I just wanted to be able to always make plays. And uh, the three Edge and Chain helped me do that. Uh, the only other monster I played was Triple Maxi, just because I think Maxi is non-negotiable. I think it's uh, it's a board breaker. It's going first, going second card. It it doesn't matter. Like this card is just insane. If your opponent doesn't have the out to this, then they're in a really, really, really tough spot. So uh, probably would never play a deck without this. Just putting that out there. Uh, as far as fusions, uh, not fusions. As far as spells goes, I played. Uh, I'll start off with this: the Triple Branded Fusion, the Heart and Soul of the deck. This card resolves, it's almost a guaranteed win, unless they have like Super Poly or something. But this card's absolutely insane. Um, it's hard and soul of the deck, but this deck needs to be able to play without this card. That's why I played cards like, you know, the tri Triple Albaz, you know, the Triple Edge of Chain, just so I have like ways to play without this card resolving. Uh, and then I played, uh, I'll go ahead and cover the branded lineup real quick. I played Triple Branded in Red, Triple Branded Opening, One Branded Lost, and One Branded Theater, uh, Despia Theater. Um, I like three red. Same reason I like three tragedy, and it's just grind game. It just makes it makes it so you can play for a lot longer than your opponent that only plays two of each. Um, the opening, obviously, this is a starter, absolutely mandatory at two, at three. I'm sorry, and then the one lost in the one theater. This makes it so the lost makes it so your mirror matches are very favorable for you if they don't have this. Um, if you're able to consistently resolve this card's effect, you get a plus one every single turn. Because you're going to keep on searching Albion and keep on drawing a free card. But also, your opponent can't respond to your fusion effects. As long as you chain link order your stuff correctly, they can't stop you from using your effects. So you're going to just slowly just out-resource your opponents in the mirror match or even in just normal matches because of this card. Um, definitely mandatory in my opinion, at least right now. It could change in the future. But then the theater, I think, is also mandatory right now because this allows you to grind almost forever. You, you're able to set, if you're able to set up this plus like a Quertus on board, plus like an Alibur in graveyard, you're not getting OTK'd because 
If this dies, if one of your fusions dies, you just summon your Alibur back. And you negate an effect. And then if your Alibur dies, then you summon a fusion back out with this. It's just a very nice little loop. Almost impossible to get OTK'd. It's really, really good. And then for the um, you know other engine kind of cards, quote-unquote, I play the Triple Patchwork. I think this is mandatory at 3 if you're playing this many cards, which you could make the argument that, hey, cut one Tragedy, cut one Edge Imp, cut one Albaz, you know, maybe cut these, you know, cut the Patchwork, cut the Gold Sark. What else was I going to cut? Cut one Rand Brandon in red. Go down to like 40-ish cards. You can totally make that argument. And it, it defi- that deck definitely works. But uh, this is the list I played, and the reason I played it is because I wanted to be able to play almost forever. And the ratios just the ratios just worked honestly. A lot, I, I very rarely bricked with this deck. Um, the ratios are very nice, uh, but playing less cards is not bad either. But yeah, um, getting right into it. The patchwork at three, I think this is great. Double poly, you don't need more than two of this, especially because you're playing a card like the theater. You don't need to play more than this. You you, you never want to draw this card. You do want to draw this card, and you do want to draw this card. So that's kind of the reason behind the two poly. The one Gold Sark, one Foolish. I think this is mandatory if you're playing Merc. If you're playing Mercarrier, you should definitely be playing Gold Sark because Gold Sark then can hit the Tragedy or the Mercarrier. And if this gets hit, you can add any of these cards. You know, from your Ecclesia to your Kit to your Albion to your Albaz. It's just great. It, it makes your turns a little bit more diverse. Uh, the one Foolish is obviously mandatory because you, you can send... Gosh, you can send so much in this deck. The standard place to send Tragedy, right, and get your Search. But you can also send your Comedy. You can also send your Albaz. You can also send your Ecclesia. You can all, you can send anything just to further your plays. Whatever you need, this card gets. It's great. Uh, and then for Board Breakers, I play Double Super Poly, Triple Droplet, and one called by the, and two Called by the Grave. Uh, Super Poly is obviously insane right now. This card is fantastic in the Mirror Match. It's also really good in Sword Soul. It's good if you have any Despia card on the field. It's good if you have any Albaz on the field. It's just fantastic. If you're not main decking it, you got to side deck it, but you should be main decking it, in my opinion. And the triple droplet, um, this just makes it so you can go second super easily. And this deck is very good at going second already. This just makes it even better. So my goal was to crack boards going first or second. Like going first, I want to set up a board that's probably going to get broken because this deck doesn't set up oppressive boards. Like they push through a little bit, but they don't kill me because it's hard to kill through this deck. And then my on my second turn, just blow them out. Like, that was kind of my game plan. Or going second, just blow them out. Like that was yeah, it worked. It worked. It worked very well. Uh, then double called by this card's it's one of the best cards in the game. <laughs> There's really no need to explain this card. Uh, moving on to the extra deck, uh, I would make a few changes about the extra deck. So definitely about the extra deck. The main deck still up in the air if I want to change anything. Um, one Predaplant, Dragostavalia, one Ash Dragon, double Albion, uh, double Lubelion, double Mirror Jade, double Masquerade, one Quertus, double Chimera, one Perskinian, and one Verite. Uh, I'm definitely not going to play Verite again. I don't think Verite is that good. I would much rather play uh, Millenniumize Restrict and then just play Instant Fusion in the main board. I think that's fantastic. It, it's able to eat hand traps. Um, it, it eats a hand trap. It plays around Ash. It plays around Valor. It plays around all this stuff. It's absolutely insane. And also, if you have a branded opening in Graveyard, it becomes a monster negate on your opponent's turn, too. So, it's really, really solid. Highly recommend it. I'm, pro- I'm definitely not going to play this anymore. And then, um, I don't think you need two Masquerades. But I don't know what the substitute would be at this current moment. Um, so, I will get back to you guys on that when I decide something. But I don't think two of this is necessary. Because in games where you're going for two of this, you're probably going to lose that game. Or just win. Like I, <laughs> okay, That's a really bad statement. But I feel like it's not optimal to go for two of this yes you're going to put your opponent on be able to out this in x amount of cards whatever it is but if they can out your board they can out your board and then you have no you have very little follow-up you don't have real disruptions you just have you know burning i would much rather just set up a normal board going first and then make this on like turn two three or four where their life points are maybe like you know 3,000, 4,000, something like that. And this card puts like legitimate pressure on them to be able to make optimal plays with a little, like a, with a, you know, a small number of resources. Uh, but that's just my philosophy with this card. Uh, I might be wrong, but right now I, I don't think two of these is 
is the way. But uh, time will tell. Time for sure. Uh, moving on to the side deck, uh, I play Double Crow, Double Droll, Triple Token Collector, one Necro World, one Zombie World. This is pretty mandatory in my opinion. Uh, triple D Barrier and Triple Evenly Matched. Uh, the Crows were obviously for the Mirror Match. They also have applications in other matchups too, like Sky Striker. I played against Sky Striker. This was great. Uh, the Drolls are good against a lot of things. You know, Drolls good against Flunder. Drolls good against the Mirror Match. Drolls good against uh, Spiral. A lot of combo decks. Um, it's decent against the Tribrigade Adventure Zodiac deck that I won a tournament with a few weeks ago. So if you haven't checked that video, please go check it out. It's a really cool deck and it's still viable post ban list. So definitely go check that out. But it, it's not, I'm not saying it's like optimal against that or anything, but it's decent. So that's why I played the Drolls. The tr Token Collector is obviously for Sword Soul. Sword Soul is like right there with Despia. It's like the best deck in the game, in my opinion, right now. Especially, well, in best of, well, in non side deck events, Sword Soul I think is the best deck. In side deck events, I think Despia is the best deck. But uh, that's because of this card, because this card is so insane. Uh, the Necro World Zombie World, this is for Tri Brigade. It's for. Flunder, it's for miscellaneous decks that lose to this. It's for rogue stuff that loses to this. It's it's dinos, right? It's a, it's a lot of random stuff that this beats, but it's necessary to play. D barrier is obviously for the mirror match and for Sword Soul primarily. Then evenly is goes in anytime I know I'm going second. Uh, this is back row removal, which I didn't play specific back row removal because Eldritch is not as popular because the floodgates got hit. But that's why I decided to go with evenly over anything else. Uh, this card's fantastic. This card performed fantastically uh, fantastically that's not a word it was amazing for me in this tournament and it was also amazing against me when it resolved so this card's really good right now um but yeah that's it for the deck profile i'm gonna go ahead and jump really quickly into my matchups and then i'm gonna get this video wrapped up make sure it's not too long uh i gotta buy round one because uh well i signed up early enough to get a buy so it is what it is uh round two i played against sword soul um, I was dead to rights game one. He went first and set up a really, really good board, and I had a very mediocre hand. So he had me game one, but he DC'd. So that was really unfortunate. I don't like winning games like that. I don't like winning matches like that. But, uh, you know, Master Duel doesn't have a reconnect feature yet. If they're ever going to, I hope they do. Please. <laughs> It'd be really nice. But uh, I won game one because of that. Game two, he set up a board, pretty similar board, but I actually had a good hand, a playable hand. I OTK'd him through it. Uh, I just did what Despia does. Um, round three, I played against Sky Striker with this card in it. <laughs> this guy was main decking Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. I was like, what the hell? What the hell's happening? Game one, I ended on like a, you know, just a standard Despia board. Then he flips this thing on turn three. He sets like four back row with Sky Striker. Then flips this thing on turn three. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? What am I about to lose to? And it it won him game one for sure. Game one was actually pretty close because I think he was kind of like toying with me. I think he was kind of playing with his food. And I ended up going for Masquerade, like middle of the game. And Masquerade doesn't get stopped by this, because Masquerade's kind of like a... It's, it's not an activated effect, it's a condition. It's basically like a cost for him. It turns into a cost for him. So, it's really... Masquerade's a weird card, but... Uh, and I don't even know if that's like actually how it's like technically is, but that's kind of how I think about it, because it's not an activated effect, it's just like a condition that continues to occur. So, he... And it, he was paying a lot of life points, and he got down to 800 and he finally found a droplet and was able to out my masquerade and kill me. But if it wasn't for that, I don't know. Like the, I, it, was, it was just so weird. I don't really have words for it. It was so strange. Uh, game two, um, I let him go first. Um, he bricked. I didn't push anything on turn two because I didn't have enough for game and I didn't know if he bricked or not. Then turn three, he passed again because he bricked. And then I just OTK'd him, turn four. Uh, sorry about that. Didn't mean to hit the mic. Uh, game three, I just did Despia stuff and won in time. I won in time because game one took forever and I was really stubborn and didn't want to just quit because I was kind of pissed. Um, probably should have just scooped it up, but hindsight's 20-20. Um, 
Round three, I played against, uh, round four, sorry, I played against Tri-Brigade, Adventure Tri-Brigade Zodiac, which I was just talking about. That deck is fantastic. That deck is so, so powerful. It's very consistent. It's very strong. It's able to use Adventure to its fullest extent, especially now. I think it plays Adventure better than any other deck in the game right now, and I think it's super slept on. Uh, game one, I don't remember if I went first or second game one, to be honest with you, but all I know is I got nibbed. And I continued to play anyways. And I ended on like an insane board through Nib. Because Mirror Jade is able to send Ash Dragon. And then during end phase I'm able to bring out Al like Albaz. Infuse with Nib. Then go into Albion. Then go into Mirror Jade again. And then I ended with like a Branded and Red set. There was nothing he could really do. I just I had a really good hand that game. Game 2 he set up an Unbreakable board. He set up Griffin. Revolt. Double Dragon Lords I think. And then Anti-Spell. Okay, you didn't need the anti-spell, man, but he had it. Uh, game three, he uh, I opened kind of suboptimal game three, but I ended on Quertus plus, sorry, I'll get that out of the way. Uh, I ended on Quertus plus Theater, which is a pretty good lock with Alibur in the grave and Dramaturge on board, but he had evenly. So I kept the Quertus and then was able to survive the turn. And then on my next turn, I was just able to kind of push through his stuff. And in th that turn, I made a really interesting play, which I want to talk about. During the end phase, instead of using Albion's effect to set Branded in Red, what I decided to do was I decided to add the Branded in Red to my hand and then toggle on and quick fit and like quick play spell card in the end phase, activate the Branded in Red to target either ad lib or something in my graveyard, get it back to my hand, fuse with ad lib plus the Mirror Jade on board to go into a Dragos to Palea, and then bring out a Mirror Jade with ad lib's effect. This was in a simplified game state. He had like three cards. One of them I knew was Kit. He didn't he didn't have much. And what this did was it made it so I had a less I it made it so I had like worse quote unquote disruptions, but I had guaranteed disruptions. And I guaranteed was not losing to Bell. I was not losing to DD Crow. I was not losing to Called By on his turn, a top deck, any of those. So I thought the play was really good, and afterwards he complimented it, and he was like, that was an, like an insane play. Like, nobody plays around that. Um, I think he said he's from Thailand. He was like, nobody in Thailand plays around that. Like, that was really good. He's like, you won the game because of that, because I had called by. And I just I just wanted to say that because I want to, like, you know, tell you guys out there, like, if you're playing in a tournament, like, think, if you're playing a match, like, there's two sides to the game, right? Your opponent's got cards. They might have the card that beats you. So think about when you're making your plays, like what cards beat you and try to beat those cards. Try to beat the counters while you're playing. Uh, pretty simple advice. I think everyone kind of knows that. But that was like a in, you know, in tournament game, you know, scenario where it actually came up and it won me the match. Like it is the reason that I was able to get top eight of this event was because of that. Uh, so really, really cool. Good play. Uh, round five, I played Sword Soul again. I won game one, he won game two, pretty back and forth, standard Despia Sword Soul matchup. Game three, uh, we ended up going into time game three, but I went first, set up a board, he broke the board because he's playing Sword Soul and it breaks boards like it's no one's business. Uh, did a little bit of damage, but couldn't kill me. My turn rolls around, we end up hitting time during my turn, and I OTK'd him through his board and through time. So... Um, like, like I said, kind of my game plan. My game plan was to set up a mediocre board going first, have plenty of follow-up, not die, OTK. Or go second, OTK. And uh, it worked very well. In top eight, I played against a mirror match. That's be a mirror match. Very not even close to similar list. Very different list. His list uh, was hand traps. He played 40, 41 cards. Played like 12 hand traps. I think really big hand trap engine. He played Maxis, Ash Blossoms, Veilers, Imperms. He was playing everything, which I think is super weird in this deck, but uh, it worked for him. Uh, game one, I pseudo bricked. I uh, didn't brick, but I lost to. I was looking at my hand and I was like, okay. I don't remember my exact hand, but I know I had Branded Fusion. And I know I didn't have anything else <laughs> that was going to actually be able to make plays. So. I went for, and I went for the Branded Fusion at some point. I don't remember exactly when. 
I probably tried to bait it with something else first, but I went for Brand Diffusion and he ashed it, and it kind of ended my turn. I ended on a very suboptimal board, and he had a very good hand. He had very good engine. He had Brand Diffusion, Patchwork Rolling, he had an Alibur, uh, so he was able to kind of clean that game up pretty easily. Game two, he had Ash Blossom again game two, but I was able to make a board. I was able to end on a Jade, plus a Brandon in red, plus I th think an Alibur, but I don't remember what my other monster was, but I know I had two monsters, and like a Mirror Jade was one of them, and a Brandon in red was something, and I had a D-Barrier. He hit me with Super Poly. Like, he went for Polymerization, I chained D-Barrier, called Fusion, then he just chained Super Poly, and just cracked my board, destroyed my follow-up, um, he had called by for my branded in red too. It was absolutely insane. He opened phenomenal game two and, uh, yeah, I ended up losing. Uh, that guy also went on to win the tournament. So shout out to him. He played great. Um, I personally don't think his list is, you know, the best Despia list, but he won the tournament and I didn't. So, um, I'm probably, I might be wrong. I totally can admit that he won three mirror matches in a row. To win the event so he won a mirror match in top eight top four and in finals so shout out to him like i said he played great but yeah that was my uh tournament experience that was my top eight branded despia deck profile from gg tour 15 host by dle thank you guys so much for watching please be sure to leave a like comment subscribe down below if you enjoyed the video and want to see anything else go check out some of my videos from the past few days uh go check out that tri brigade video that tri brigade adventures udiac video that deck is serious that deck is gonna be very very good going forward um, but yeah, like I said, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.